Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I'm going to try and kill two birds with one stone. My friend wants some garden planters to put some herbs in and I want to clear out the workshop. I've got loads of this mismatched treated timber, some feather edge cladding and some paints from when I built three shepherd's huts last year. So, let's get started. The first job is to get all these mismatched pieces ripped down on the table saw to the same size. I'm going to make all the pieces square just because it makes it easier in the long run. Normally when you cut treated timber, you should then retreat the cut side, but I'm going to paint it all later, so I don't need to worry about that. Another thing I had knocking around were these garden planters, so I'm going to base my wooden planters around them. I use these troughs to work out the dimensions, and then I can start cutting the pieces down on the mitre saw, setting up a stop block so I can cut all the long lengths at the same time. What I'm going to do is make two frames, one for the front and one for the back, and then join them together. I'm going to use a type of joinery I've never tried before, and that's pocket holes. I bought this little pocket hole jig over a year ago now, I think, and I've never used it. So I thought this project would be a good time to actually give it a go. You can get clamps specially made for this machine that probably make it a bit easier, but fiddling around with this one for my track saw did the job. If, like me, you've not used pocket holes before, the principle of them is pretty simple. You set the block back depending on the thickness of the wood, and then you get it clamped in place. I mean, you have to fiddle around a bit with my silly clamp, but you get it clamped in place. Then you can drill the hole. So you could join two bits of wood together just by screwing them together, but the pocket hole system is supposed to have a couple of advantages over doing that. First, because you're drilling down at an angle, the screw goes into the next piece of wood at an angle. Screws can pull out of end grain reasonably easily, so going at an angle means it's also going cross grain a little, so it should be more secure. The second advantage is, well, I guess it's in the title, the screws are in a pocket. They're kind of hidden. The whole system ended up costing me a little more than I had planned. And especially when you consider I just had it set on the side for a year and never used it. When I had the two frames made, I had some joining pieces cut and then I could drill the pocket holes in them and start attaching them to the first frame. So far, so good and relatively easy. The trouble came when I tried to attach it to the second frame. I would wanted to keep all the pockets of the pocket screws on the inside of the planter so you wouldn't see them, but then trying to get the drill and the drill bit in was a bit of a tricky. I had this flexible shaft for the drill, so that helped out a bit, but it certainly made it a bit more complicated than I thought. When I ripped all the wood down at the beginning, I saved those off cuts because I knew I'd need them later at this stage. I'm attaching battens to the inside of the frame, so I've got somewhere to attach the feather edge cladding in a bit. I used some waterproof wood glue and then a few brad nails just to hold them in place. Again, I measured the sides, set up stock blocks, and cut all the feather edge pieces in one go. Then they could be attached with some glue and a few brad nails. It's almost like I planned it, but I really didn't. Each side only needed one piece of cladding. This certainly made it easy, but I had a bit more to use up, so it's a shame I couldn't get rid of it all. I gave it all a very quick sand just to get rid of any really rough bits, and then I could get on with painting. Somehow I've managed to have three open cans of the same colour, so it's really great to use all of that up. And that's really the last step in this project. So it's managed to use things up and have a go at pocket holes. I managed to use the things up, but I wasn't impressed with pocket holes. I'm sure they have their uses for some jobs, and maybe it was just that little jig I had, but I found them quite difficult to use. I think next time I'd have just screwed it together and then filled the holes. So, thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more videos.